the drunken book tag, right? Yeah. Are we supposed to be drunk for it? Hi YouTube, it's Kathy and this is my friend Paige who I'm visiting in Florida. Today we are doing, as you might have been able to tell from the title, the drunken book tag. I was tagged in this months and months ago by Sajid and was like, hey, I'm gonna do this when I'm drinking again because I didn't drink all of last year. And then I realized that it would be really expensive to like have a glass of each of these things and also detrimental to my liver. So I figured in lieu of seeing me be a complete fool, I would do this tag with Paige, who Sajid also knows and loves. So there we go. That, that's why this is happening. <laughs> I also don't have an appendix anymore, so that would be real bad to like drink to excess like that. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, There's nothing to help my liver. Uh, there. You yeah, know. <laughs> that, that sounds terrible. Yeah. You guys have probably seen this beautiful face before. It's been on my channel quite a few times over on The Princess and the Scrivener. Paige is the princess. Paige really likes the first drink that's on this list, so we're gonna start with that. The first one is wine, a classic you keep for no other reason than it makes you seem smart and well-read. <laughs> I do like wine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. I am, I am a wine drinker, but as far as the book goes, I say Frankenstein. I don't have a ton of classics. I just haven't read Frankenstein yet. I definitely plan to. The copy that I have is probably like the most goth looking copy you could probably find. Nice. I mean, if you've seen any of the Women Crush Wines Day videos and you know how I feel about Mary Shelley. Yes. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Definitely on your list. I love a good copy of a book. We saw so many good copies of books today. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, book shopping. There's one on my shelf that is Canterbury Tales, and okay. it's like one of those books that comes in like its own little box as well. So it's in a little box that you pull it out of, and like the cover's really pretty and all that. Haven't read it yet. Mm -hmm. Figured I'd get around to reading it eventually, but it, it's hard to read Chaucer. Like it takes yeah. some time. Yeah, it's in like old English. Yeah, it's... although I think my edition might have it also translated into more of a colloquial English as well, okay. which will definitely help when I get around to it. Next one is Vodka, a book that messed you up. And Side. Which is so accurate for vodka. <laughs> I mean like anything by Adam Silvera, which I know you haven't read yet and I'm so sorry, but... I tried! <laughs> the one that I read is apparently like, I don't want to say the worst one, but like... It is the, the one worst that's, one. Yeah, it's the one that's the hardest to get through. Yeah, reading them out of order, do recommend. They both die at the end, definitely my favorite out of the three of them. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited that you're going to read that and not more happy than not. I only got through that because I already knew Silvera was great. Yeah, I read a lot of like happy romancy books. <laughs> My whole obsession with Pride and Prejudice has just like completely messed everything up. So I just have like my standards are far too high for anybody to be honest. But you know, that's how I roll now. So, oh, the Song of Achilles. Holy mm. shit, that hurt yep. so bad. Just straight weeping for 80 pages. She has a new book coming out in April that's just more Greek mythology. So I'm excited for that. The Song of Achilles hurts so good. <laughs> The next one is Beer, a cheap book that hits the spot. Speaking of cheap romances. You're right. <laughs> Do All the Boys I Loved Before and that whole series. That's probably like the closest I read to like the cheesy books that just do something for you, you know? You don't expect a lot from them and they just give you yeah. like, what you need. Yeah, I will say that like I expected a lot less from it than when I went into it, but then it is like comparatively to like the other things, it's a pretty just like light, fluffy, romancy YA book that I just happen to like. And that one girl too, that yeah. one is so cute. So cute, kind of fluffy, gets the job yeah, done. Exactly. You know? It's it's just so little is the thing. That's why I would yeah. call it a cheap one, just because you really want it to be a full length novel and it's not. Yeah. yeah. And then it's done, and you're like, but no. Yeah. It was so cute and I want more of it. Mm -hmm. Number four is Rum, a book that features pirates. Do you have any good pirate books? There's Daughter of the Pirate King, but I haven't actually read it. The sequel I think just came out. That's why I think that's why it's kind of popular right now. Also, it's apparently good. I have a good one. Yeah. It's it's not like a classic pirate though. It's it's called Arabella of Mars and it's okay. like being a pirate but in space. Okay. Yeah. So, and I really enjoyed it. It's a really great sci-fi and like an alternative history. Okay. So she like basically dresses as a boy and gets on this ship and pretends to be like a boy on the ship. And I guess she's not technically a pirate, but there are pirates in there somewhere. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls has Anne Bonny in it. Mm -hmm. So that's the closest I've ever gotten that's to reading perfect. like about a pirate. Whiskey is the most expensive or valuable book you own. You do have quite a few signed copies of things. Yeah. They're all the same price as the regular books though. They're not, yeah. they're not like first edition or anything. Yeah. They're not technically textbooks, but I have these books that I read like four specific classes. Textbooks are so expensive. The last time I went to school, it was a two-year diploma, 
And the first semester, like, I bought a bunch of the books, and we basically never used them, and I was like, this was wasted money. Mm -hmm. So for the rest of the time, I would only buy the book if I could get it for $20 or less. Otherwise, I was like, this is a waste of my money, and I'm poor. Fortunately, like, I took a lot of lit classes, so the textbooks were all, like, either anthologies or novels. And I'm assuming a bunch of them were in public domain, so you could get, like, yeah. eight up copies of them yeah, for free. Yeah, especially for, like, early lit classes, definitely. I could just, yeah. like, read the whole thing online. I do have this one Snow White sketchbook that I think is actually my mom's, but it's on my bookcase. And it's it's got like art from Snow White. That's probably pretty valuable. I don't know if it's valuable at all, but I have this book that was signed by the author when I was about 10 years old. I think it was signed in 1996. Number six is non-al- It just seems like we've been drinking, <laughs> but yeah, we yeah, haven't yeah. yet. Number six is non-alcoholic or water, your favorite children's book. There's there's so many children's book holes. <laughs> <laughs> just go with the first one that comes to mind, holes. Yeah, the one that I remember so clearly from reading as a child. Oh, there's like Uni the Unicorn, which is really cute, and it's by Amy Krauss Rosenthal. The whole book is about this unicorn who dreams of meeting a human being and like becoming friends with the human mm. and um, all the unicorn friends are like humans aren't real what are you talking about and then like at the very end uni meets a little girl little human girl and they become really good friends it's really cute there's a picture book I really like that definitely wasn't from my childhood because it came out like a year ago called Franklin's Flying Bookshop by Jen Campbell who okay. also has a YouTube channel and is a lovely human being and it's just really cute it's about this dragon who likes books a lot and then meets this human girl who also likes books and they go on an adventure together cute. And it's, yeah, it's just really adorable and it's like the first in a series of three and I'm just like I'm so here for it. Yeah. I read a lot of Nancy Drew books as a kid, um, but I can't pick out like a specific favorite because it's been so long since I've read them that yeah. they all they're all blended together in my head. They're yeah. all the same thing. Uh, so this one is Blowjobs, the drink, not the act. I have no idea what's in that beverage, but considering I used to drink something called Porn Stars when I was younger, people just like to make dirty names for things. It's fine. So a blowjob is a shooter mixed drink made by slowly pouring Bailey's Irish Cream in Kahlua and Amaretto and topped with whipped cream without mixing. I don't know if I'd ever have the courage to ask for one, but like maybe I'll just make one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're an adult. You can just buy all the alcohols and layer it together. Yeah. It's fine. This one is a controversial book or title that you have read or would like to read. I love to go through the banned books list mm -hmm. and be like, I want to be on this list, first of all. Looking for Alaska. Yeah. I've read Looking for Alaska. Me too. Controversial. <laughs> I guess like in a way, like Harry Potter is always controversial for like JK Rowling reasons, but also like super religious parents being like you can't read about witchcraft and the devil and like the devil has not a single thing to do with it yeah I laughed so hard about that when it was first happening I was yeah. like what if evangelical fan fiction where Harry goes to Bible school and Hagrid is like a Mormon that comes to your door Aunt Petunia is evil because she's a science wielding feminist Hermione's parents are Dumbledore and McGonagall it's ridiculous. I have it so many questions, but none of the will to ask them. Yeah. Oh, oh the, the Handbook for Mortals? I would like to hate read that. I don't want to pay money to read it. Yeah. So if I, like, got a free copy of it, I'd yeah. like to read it just for how terrible it is, because I know Marina's read it, and, like, basically nobody else has to because she just tweeted everything about yeah. it. Yeah. Sarah and I want to do the Read It and Weep series, but we want to do it with Fifty Shades as well, but mm -hmm. we also just don't want to buy Fifty Shades. Yeah. Except from like a secondhand bookstore because we don't want to support E.L. James. Shots, a small book that packs a punch. Have you ever read Fever Dream? It's this really short book that when it was recommended to me, they were said if, if you can read it in one go, it's the best way to do it because okay. As you're reading it, you basically start to feel like you are also in a fever dream. I've read a lot of short stories for classes. There's one called, oh my god, I can't remember what it's called. They live in this dystopian universe where they have to wear the like, gun vests. I can't, the, whatever the term for the vest Oh, the Kevlar is. vest? Kind of, but there's like a term for those vests that is the title of the short story. I can't remember who wrote it. What it's called, I don't remember, but it's told from the perspective of the mom, the dad, and the teenage daughter. I liked that one a lot. I wish I could remember what it was called. The Hangover, a book you regret reading. Scott Westerfeld has a book called Peeps. I read it during my vampire craze because it promises to be a vampire book. The like the way that the supernatural works is it's more like viral type stuff rather than supernatural vampires and like they have these um, parasites that cause vampirism. They even say like in the book, we're not really vampires. I didn't like it at all. <laughs> That's, I think, I, if I regret anything, it's just that I 
trusted Scott Westerfeld to read it. <laughs> like him, but just not that book. Something I DNF'd last month because I just couldn't keep reading it and it already felt like I'd spent a million hours reading it, but it was only like 133 pages in was The Natural Way of Things by Charlotte Wood. And it's about these women who wake up in this camp in the middle of the Australian desert and they don't know how they got there. You kind of are like, okay, well, who rounded them up? Why are they there? Why are they being treated badly? It wasn't for me. I've heard people really, really like it. I want that time back. I could have been reading something else. Yeah. The very last question is next Friday night, a book you're stoked to read. So many things. The Brightsiders <laughs> by Jen Wild. Super excited for that to come out. She also has another book that was just announced that's coming out in 2019. Already excited for that one as well. I don't even remember what the title is. I just remember the synopsis and I'm so here for it. That Those will be my answers for now. Otherwise, this will be a thousand minute video because I'll just be like this one and this one and this one. I know we're both excited for an absolutely remarkable thing. Yeah, very excited. Um, Puddin is coming out soon. So excited for Puddin. 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 <laughs> Puddin is coming out soon and uh, Julie Murphy is like my favorite so I'm excited for that. I just received my copy of The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one. Yes. Arushan and The End of Time is coming out I think at the end of this month and it's the first book in the Percy Jackson universe that is from Rick Riordan's imprint of Disney Hyperion where he's intentionally hiring authors of color to write stories in his universe from the perspective of different mythologies. I was talking about Circe, which is the next Madeline Miller book that comes out later this year. I have put so many books on pre-order, it's not even funny. Basically, we can't answer this question with one book each because yeah, no. so many books. Yeah. yeah, I have so many books that are on order in the catalog in the library, so they exist, but you can't get them because they don't exist yet. Yeah. yeah. Want it, want it right now. What if it's us? Say Adam and Becky? Yes! Oh, That's so that's excited. October. Um, and then, oh yeah, Leah on the Offbeat is Leah. also coming out. Yes, Leah. I, I knew I was missing something. And yeah. it's definitely, definitely Leah. Oh, I can't wait for Leah. Leah is me. Cool. We did it. Yay. Yay. Thank you so much for doing another book tag with me. We Yay. did a book tag over on Paige's channel as well. So obviously that will be linked in all of the places and you should go check it out. And just check out their channel in general because it's amazing and I love it. And I can't believe that I am friends with talented <laughs> people that are way smarter than me. Oh my God. <laughs> so there's that. If you've read any of these books, let us know about it down in the comments below. On the way down in the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. You can like and share this as you see fit. And I'll see you sometime eventually. Okay, bye.